Now, before I talk about white people gentrifying the sound, oh gosh, there he is again, making jokes about white people. <laughs> he clearly hates us. You see, this is what BLM promotes. It's what it promotes. Racial hate against white people, you know. BLM wants to ruin our statues and defund our police and blah, 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 blah. So in the last video, we spoke about the Midlands uni scene, UK Afrobeats, the white saviour complex, and of course, Afro Swing. Now, for this section, I've decided that I'm gonna treat myself to some wine. It's not quite fine wine, because I most certainly don't have the Kojo and Young Bane money, but Baba God will provide, he will provide. Also, this is clearly Hennessy and Coke, it's actually not wine. Anyways, quickly, how dare you watch my videos and not subscribe? How dare you? That's like coming into my house, eating my food, opening my fridge, and just taking things without even saying thank you. Subscribe now, you scat. Or I'll get Terrell Lewis to tap on your window with an imaginary gun. If you know the joke, you know. Anyways, Kojo Fun's and Young Bane's Fine Wine was a game changer, not only for their individual careers, but for the rest of the Afro swing, bashment, fusion, wave, whatever you want to call it scene because the genre had so many names, no one really knew what to call it, but Afro swing was the one that stuck the most. Sometimes a track will take on a life of its own and blowing away an artist never really anticipated. And this most certainly was that track because the uni world loved it. They loved it. I loved it. I even caught myself a couple cheeky wines to this one, you know? But once again, this song was that perfect fusion of different influences from Africa to the Caribbean to the UK. And I'm not gonna lie, it, it's a near perfect track. It's a near perfect track. The video on the other hand, yeah, the video stinks. I'm gonna be real with you, the video really does stink. And I'm gonna touch on videos a little later in this episode, but while we're here, I am actually going to look at some of the YouTube comments in the video because from what I remember, this shit is... Yeah, never mind. Now, this is no disrespect to any label, but the Afro Swing era, for me, is the prime example of why you need to hire black people that live and breathe this music into these environments. Because I can't tell you how many meetings I've sat in and I've looked around the table and been like, you guys don't actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't know what you're on about. And then on the radio side of things, because radio is still super important, whether people want to agree or not, on the radio side of things, Represent and Radar were the only stations that were playing music from these acts. None of the mainstream stations were playing any Afro Swing tunes. Jay Huss obviously got signed to Black Butter, but he's an anomaly. He is like the father in this thing. But the other new emerging acts weren't really getting any love from the labels or from mainstream media to begin with. And these men were killing it. They were killing it. If you saw what I saw in uni, you would know that they were killing it. If I was an A&R at that time, yeah, the one act I would have signed would have been Jage Holland. I don't know where the hell he is, but it would have been him because I tell you this now, if you knew the impact that this brother had on the Midlands at that time, bro, even though this was still very much an underground sound, it wasn't until one man came in at Addison Lee and then everything, everything changed. Painting called Madison, I tell her come and jump in my Addison Lee. So for copyright reasons, I can't actually pay notes as Addison Lee, but we've all heard it. We've all heard it, we all know it. And arguably is actually one of the most successful and impactful songs from that era. Although, Ramses Barkin would like to enter the conversation and have a word. I might link my thing from Barkin. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, yeah. Both songs were super <laughs> annoying. Like, it's super annoying. And I'm not gonna lie, yeah. There were girls from a certain demographic on Snapchat. And, yeah. They really did make me hate this song. I, I hate this song because of them. There's no other way to say it 
and we are stating obvious here but notes is addison lee was a bona fide smash hit an absolute smash hit to the point where i feel sorry for anybody called madison because you must find the song even more annoying than i do actually you know what let me the thing is yeah i don't actually hate the song it just it just got rinsed on tv it was on radio it was on youtube i was hearing it in raves i heard it at concerts i heard it at festivals literally you could not go anywhere anyway literally you could not go anywhere without hearing that song and once again just for historical and yearly context so we know what years we're talking about this was all happening around the late 2016s early 2017s now before i talk about white people gentrifying the sound <laughs> oh gosh there he is again making jokes about white people <laughs> he clearly hates us you see this is what blm promotes it's what it promotes racial hate against white people you know blm wants to ruin our statues and defund our police and blah 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 jesus christ it's a joke <laughs> get over yourselves because if black people really wanted to revenge the crimes that have been committed to us throughout history it will get very very peak everyone singlet will get torn so let's just be respecting ourselves and if you don't want to respect us that's fine go complain to ofcom like you did with diversity and alicia dixon and f about my pub before i went on my tangent i am actually going to reel off a list of some of the most popular and monumental songs of this era because the men and the women because we can't forget the ladies most certainly deserve their flowers because once again, you have to remember that this was a point in time where UK music sounded like this. You lost your phone, you lost your friends. Now here comes that classic line, I'm never drinking again. I still can't believe Skepta hasn't had this removed on the internet because it's bad. It's so, so bad. <laughs> then again, Skepta is the individual that did all over the house and even now, after all these years, I think to myself, what, what was the point of that video? What was the point of that video? Anyway, um, as I said, here are my top 10 slash 11 favourite songs from the Afro Swing era. And once again, for copyright reasons, I can't actually play the track before one idiot in the comment goes, not going to lie, bro, it would have helped if you played the tracks. I don't want to be sued. You know, I've got rent to pay. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, in no particular order, here are my top 10 slash 11 favourite songs from the Afro Swing era. Be Young, Jumanji, Hardy Caprio, One Ace and Best Life, Notes, Aladdin, Young Bane, Rihanna, NSG featuring Gecko, Yo Darling, J Huss, Did You See, Rams, Barkin, Ooh, Kojo Fun, Dun Tarkin, Lotto Boys, No Don, Retch Free 2, Kojo Funds and Jelani tell me there's a lot of Kojo Funds in this list. And Young Bane with Shape of You, the remix. And this song leads me perfectly into the next phase of this video. Now, we all know Ed Sheeran, possibly the most unproblematic guy you will ever meet. I mean, other than when One Extra made him the most influential person in black music back in 2014. Um, he's largely unproblematic. And to be fair though, to be fair, that whole list wasn't his fault. Like, this is a man that just wants to wear a t-shirt and some flare jeans and just strum on his guitar. This is a man that went on stage with Beyonce, dressed like he was busking outside Shepherd's Bush Station. Let all that worry, like the breeze do fingers slip away. Peace has come to Zimbabwe. Now, arguably, one of Ed Sheeran's most successful and popular songs is Shape of You. And to this day, it's sitting comfortably on 2 billion streams. Not million, not 200 million, 2 billion streams. And then, you know, a measly 5 billion YouTube views. I mean, nothing major if you ask me, to be honest. Now, as I say, and I always say, I am a full-blown music nerd. I love this shit. And I believe I've got a very good ear when it comes to music. So when I first heard this song, yeah, the first thing that crossed my mind was, sonically, this doesn't sound like a 
typical Ed Sheeran song, whatever that sounds like, you know. I know he likes to experiment with his sound, but this was distinctively different to anything he'd put out before. Do you know what it is, yeah? Do you know what it is, actually? It's the xylophone. It's that godforsaken, just that, ah, oh, that xylophone, yeah? You see that instrument? It haunts me to this day. And I, we need to speak about this a little bit later, but we're not going to get into that right now. And when I think about that song back at that time, it was almost as if it was produced for an Afro-influenced artist of some sort, and they didn't really want it, so they just gave it to Ed. But didn't really think much about it. Just carried on with my day. And then um, a couple days went by, and I go on the gram, and then I see young Bane seductively eating chicken and chips while watching a woman dance on a rooftop. I don't get this video, by the way. Like, I don't get this video at all. But that aside, I then realised, oh wait, he's done a remix to Ed Sheeran's Shape of You. And every time I hear the Young Bane version, I almost forget that it's actually a remix because Young Bane, Shape of You, it just makes sense. Like, it just makes sense. In fact, it's very much a very perfect and great fit. And then it started to dawn on me. The big pop stars were paying attention and slowly being influenced by what was going on in the Afro swing world. And I'm gonna call a spade a spade here, yeah. Ed Sheeran's Shape of You is an Afro swing track. Ed Sheeran's Shape of You is an Afro swing track. Go on. I want somebody to convince me otherwise, because it really is. And this marked the beginning of a lot of mainstream artists dipping their toe into the Afro world and producing music with a little bit more seasoning. And the perfect example, the perfect and final example of this, is Mabel with her breakout hit, Finders Keepers. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I will never forget the day that Mabel shackled on the beat as well. Bless her. Bless her. Now, I had actually been a fan of Mabel from around early 2015 times. And I remember that I first stumbled across a tune called Thinking of You, which was this very leftish R&B song. And personally, it's still my favorite Mabel song to this day. And the reason why I bring that up and the reason why I want to make this point is there was no Afro sound to her music at the time. It seems as if she wanted to be either a pop slash R&B star, one of the two. Now, I don't know the ins and out of her label situation and I don't know what it was like at that time, but to me, as a music fan, it seemed as if it took her a while to really find her feet musically. And while she was, and I say struggling, but while she was trying to figure out her sound, at the same time, over here, you've got these really cool Afro swing guys and girls who are making a lot of noise in the music game. And then, you know, it was almost by magic. Nine months later, she pops up with a new single with none other than Mr. Kojo Funds called Finders Keepers. And the rest, as they say, is history. It's finders, keepers, now, the song was so different to anything that she'd ever put out before. And getting Kojo Funds on the track was like the perfect indication to me that Afro Swing was the sound. The song clocked in at number eight in the UK official charts. It's also sold over 600,000 copies, thus meaning it's gone platinum. She's also, since then, you know, won numerous Brit Awards and has become a household name in Britain. And if I'm honest, if I'm really honest, she should be thanking Timbo. <laughs> she should be thanking Timbo for that. Because without Timbo, a lot of people would not have a music career right now. With Mabel releasing Finders Keepers and other tunes, you can tell that the label sat her down and found a way to get her in and around the cool kids, black kids, let's be honest. And also her cheeky kind of like on-screen romance of notes most definitely helped both of their careers. So for me, Afro Swing at the time was running the game. And I promise you, yeah, you can listen to pretty much all of the top UK songs from that era and I can guarantee that you will hear something that reminds you of Afro Swing. Bro, that genre was unstoppable. I wanted to do this video to actually salute everyone that was involved, from the artists, to the producers, to the engineers, to the managers, to the promoters, to everyone, because you guys really had a major impact on British music, and that impact still remains to this day. And look, there is so much more that I could have covered, but ugh, I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm wearing a turtleneck, 
I'm done talking. My Addison leaves outside. Did you see what I done? Nah, I tried it. The joke didn't. The joke didn't bang. The video is done. Subscribe. See you guys later. Good night. But what I do want to say is, Grime fans are the biggest losers in the world. Grime fans are such neeks. Because these men are still stuck in 2003, sending each other songs via Bluetooth or infrared on their Sony Ericsson Walkman at the back of the bus.